Next, we're privileged to have Bob and Nia, who will talk about the uh, Sicilian uh, history fishing in the area. Okay, um, what I'd like to uh, present today is a s short history of the Sicilian contribution to fishing in Monterey Bay. The uh, map that I have here shows uh, the northwest corner of Sicily, and just to the left of Palermo is a small village called Isola della Femine, Isle of Women. Uh, and that's where the majority of the uh, Sicilian fishing families came to America from this village. There was several others, uh, several other villages uh, that con contributed uh, families, that would be uh, Maretamo, San Vito, and uh, San Nic Santa Nicola, and one town on the south, the bottom part of the, uh, the map is Sh uh, Shaka, and there were several families that came from there, but most of them came from Isola della Femine, which is uh, just a few miles from Palermo, the capital of Sicily. Okay, this is, this is the uh, famous Monterey sardine. Uh, it's a beautiful fish, uh, schooling fish. Uh, they uh, breed in the Southern California waters, and then they head out towards the center of the Pacific Ocean, and then around June, July, they appear off the coast of Washington, and they proceed down the coast, Oregon to California, and into Monterey Bay, and then after they finish their uh, sojourn in Monterey Bay, they head south and then repeat the cycle. So the fishermen in Washington, the fishermen in Oregon, the fishermen in California, especially at Monterey, and then in San Pedro, Southern California, intercept the, the schools of fish and bring them to the cannery, as it, we saw in the earlier part of uh, the presentations. Uh, that's myself and uh, my uncle Sparky Ania. Sparky was a pretty famous uh, football player from Monterey High, one of the best players they produced in the 20s. And uh, then he became a crewman for, uh, on the Western Flyer that went to the Sea of Cortez with John Steinbeck and Ed Ricketts. And uh, here I'm getting an earful from Sparky, uh, learning about uh, all the details of that uh, famous trip. Uh, this is a photo of uh, the pioneer fisherman, Pietro Ferrani. The one in the hat in the middle is um, Angelo Lucido, who was the uh, general manager of the San Carlos cannery, and they were partners with uh, several other fishermen. This is one of the early uh, photos of uh, the fishing program in Monterey, and you can see they're doing it all by hand. There was no mechanical help in those early days. It was all by, by hand. This is a photo of the uh, lay, laying out of the Per se net, uh, what's uh, visible on the surface is a uh, whole row of corks that keep, keep the, the net, the top of the net at the surface, and then at the bottom of the net is uh, a whole line of lead to keep the bottom of the net uh, vertical in the water. So it becomes a curtain, and they surround a school of fish, cinch up the bottom, and the fish are trapped in the net. Uh, here's, this is a photo uh, 
just a few blocks away on Pacific Street where they're uh, making uh, wine. They do go, they would go to the uh, Central Valley with the truck and uh, buy a tremendous amount of grapes, wine grapes, and then they would bring them and, and uh, make wine. This is a picture of uh, Pietro Ferranti and his wife, Rosa. Uh, Rosa is my grandfather's sister. So the Aeneas and the Ferrantes were a very closely related uh, group of uh, people. This is my grandfather, Orazio Aenea. He was partners with Pietro Ferrani and there was a third partner, Erasmo Lucido. So those three gentlemen, and uh, soon after they arrived in 1904 in Monterey, uh, several families, about 10 or, 10 or 15 different families came from Pittsburgh, California, where they uh, were living at the time. And, and they came to Monterey in 1904 and started the industry. Uh, this is a picture of my grandfather and grandmother. My grandmother's name was Dominica. And at the end of summer, before the sardine season started, many of the families would go down to Big Sur and camp for about a week or two. Uh, the families would stay. The, uh, the men who were there in Big Sur would drive up to Monterey to go fishing. And when they finished their fishing that, that day, they would come back to Big Sur until about 1st of uh, August where, or September when they would uh, start the season. This is a picture of my grandfather on, on the uh, family boat, the Aeneas. He's reading the newspaper he would read. Two, two newspapers every day, uh, they were sent to him. One was the Il Observator from uh, Italy, and the other was the San Francisco Call Bulletin. So he would read those uh, every day. This is a picture of my two uncles. Uh, on the, the right is Captain Tony Berry and the my uncle on the left is Peter Ania. And you can't see them, but behind them, uh, there would be piles of nets. My grandfather had piles of nets all over the place. Okay, this is a diagram of uh, the earliest, one of the earliest uh, types of nets. And it's a rectangle. And you can see the corks on the top and the lead weights on the bottom. And here they, they would uh, circle the fish from the beach. One, when they, whenever they spotted a, a school of fish near the beach, they would send one boat around it, dragging the net behind. And then this part would come to the beach and the men would grab this end and grab this end and, and then surround the fish. And then they would uh, pull it up onto the beach. Now this is a half ring net. Um, starting with the lumpara net. This, this is basically a lumpara net. And half rings relates to the idea of putting rings along the bottom. Here are the lead weights. They would put rings along the bottom and place a, uh, a rope in there so that these two wings would come together and then they would pull the bottom of the net together and the way it was designed it would just close, the bottom of the net would close and the fish were cut off and they had no escape. This is a purseine net that uh, they used from about 1925. Uh, the Lampara was uh, not discarded. The smaller boats used the Lampara net, but the big Persane boats would use this. 
uh, type of uh, per se net. This uh, is a photo of the fleet um, at the end of the 1940 season and after this season, the Western Flyer was heading down to the Sea of Cortez with Steinbeck and Ricketts on board. So this was, this was a celebration of uh, that 1940 season. It was the, one of the best seasons since 1929. 1929 was the biggest season. And in 1940, they uh, came very close to the 1929 Hall of Sardines. So they had a celebration. And uh, the Western Flyer uh, was slated to leave earlier, but they waited until after the, the party and celebration, and then they headed for the Sea of Cortez. So there was a boat parade, uh, street dances, and then on Fisherman's Wharf, not Fisherman's Wharf, excuse me, the, uh, the new wharf, uh, they laid out tables and they had a big barbecue and uh, over 8,000 people showed up. That was almost the total population of the city of Monterey. 1939-1940 season, um, this, these are the, the lists of the boats and the cannery that they delivered to, Calpac, F.E. Booth, Carmel Canning, Custom House, E.B. Gross, Hoveden Food Products, and so on. So, and the boats were listed. Boats were listed um, by the Boat Owners Association and the cannery owners. They decided which boats would fish for um, which cannery. And down here, they, they listed what they call switch boats that were not affiliated with any particular cannery, uh, and they were assigned to fill in wherever uh, they, they were needed. Now, this is a photo of my aunt and uncle. This is Captain Tony Berry and his wife, Rose, uh, and that would be Rose Ania. She was a Ro an Ania. And Captain Barry came from Tacoma, Washington. He was a Slavonian fisherman and came to Monterey and met my aunt, and uh, they were married in 1937. This is Captain Barry on the um, aquarium's fishing uh, or research vessel, the Western Flyer, was named after his, his boat. And these, this is the only picture of the two captains of the Western Flyer. This is... Uh, Van der Veer and Tony Berry, and, the, and Tony Berry is sitting in the captain's chair on the Western Flyer, the aquarium's Western Flyer. He was pretty happy about that. I, um, this is a picture of uh, my uncle Sparky Ania, and in the middle is Webster Street. Webster Street was John Steinbeck's attorney and friend. And Colonel Mack uh, was a uh, uh, Pebble Beach resident, and Sparky would head over to his house, and they'd have a big party, and he would tell the uh, stories of the Sea of Cortez. And since he's wearing an apron, he probably cooked a uh, spaghetti, made a spaghetti sauce for the, for the party. This is an article about uh, Steinbeck and, and Ricketts' trip to the Sea of Cortez. And uh, Sparky says, well, he didn't write everything that happened on that trip. Sparky's obituary, he was constantly connected with Steinbeck and, and Ricketts. That was his big story. This is an art article about the... Um, building and launching of the Western Boat Building, and the Western Flyer was one of the seven built in 1937. This is the crew of the Western Flyer, Captain, or the skipper, Tony Berry. The engineer was Tex Travis, 
And my uncle Sparky was the first mate and cook. Tiny Coletto was my uncle's friend. And of course, Steinbeck, Ricketts, and Carol Steinbeck. And um, Steinbeck's uh, attorney uh, went as far as San Diego when they landed in San Di from Monterey to San Diego before they headed for the Sea of Cortez. And he got off the boat there and came back to Monterey. This is a picture of my uncle, Tony Berry, his father, Frank Berry, and Martin Petrich. Martin Petrich was the owner of the Petrich, uh, the Western Boat Building uh, Company, and they, they built the Western Flyer. Here's a beautiful shot of the Western Flyer, brand new. Doesn't even have a net on the, on the back. So this is taken up in Tacoma, Washington, where the boat was built. This is uh, Captain Tony Berry. Um, this is the first day that he uh, was on the boat, and he accepted it uh, from the crew, from the, uh, the boat builders. This is uh, a photo of the party on the Western Flyer before they went to the Sea of Cortez, and this picture is a picture of Carol Steinbeck saying goodbye to one of their friends. This is a picture of Captain um, Barry and John Steinbeck on the bridge of the Western Flyer. And I point out on the, uh, of the um, antlers, the deer antlers that they nailed to the uh, crow's nest. And that was a carryover. My uncle Tony Berry was from his family was from Slavonia or Yugoslavia as we know it, and that was uh, all. Every boat had a pair of deer antlers for good luck, and that was simply a tradition for thousands of years from boats from that area. This is Tiny Coletto down on the. Uh, sea of Cortez, he's washing up. Um, this picture is Tiny Coletto and Tex, the engineer, and they have, he caught a turtle, and uh, famously they tried to make turtle soup out of it, but they forgot one thing, they did not bleed uh, the turtle, you know, like you hang a chicken and you bleed it. Uh, so it, it didn't come out very good when they cooked it and they threw it overboard. Okay, this is a copy of the journal that uh, Tony Berry kept on the trip to the Sea of Cortez. And the date is 14th, 1940. And they left San Diego at 2 p.m., 2.10 p.m. and headed south for the Sea of Cortez. Again, Another picture of, uh, another uh, page of the journal. And he gives the time and the course and the location where they are. And uh, Captain Barry was, uh, he was able to navigate. He, he learned how to navigate and use um, charts to get to where he was going. I had never and never noticed this, but I read this to the other day, and it says, Sparky and I have a blowfish apiece. Now, I didn't know that they ate blowfish, but those are poisonous fish. They have to prepare them correctly, otherwise they would have been uh, very ill, probably died if they had hadn't fixed it right. Okay, this, this was a series of articles that uh, Sparky and Aeneas sent back to the Monterey Herald while they were on the trip describing their adventures. A couple of articles uh, Steinbeck and Party do back in Monterey. This is a picture of the fleet these are purse 
This happens to be a picture of my dad's crew heading out, uh, a box of groceries. So every night, every, uh, excuse me, every afternoon, late afternoon, they would head out to the boats and around sunset they would head out for fishing. Now this happens to be a, a picture of the Aeneas, my dad's boat, uh, during a, a uh, fisherman's festival celebration. So the boats were de decorated. I remember this one in particular. All these are uh, begonias on both sides of the boat. My mom went to marina and bought all the begonias from a farm and, and they decorated the boats. I think they got a third or fourth place. They would award uh, trophies for the best boat. This is the E.S. Lucido uh, boat in the background and the Lucido family. Crew members of the Dukes. Here's the skipper right here. This is the crew of the uh, city of Monterey. Horace, ba Horace Balbo is the captain, and his dad is right here, Constantino Balbo. Actually, he was the owner of the boat. The skipper was not the owner. In this case, he was the owner of the boat. This is the crew of the uh, Dante Alighieri, and later this was the same crew for the U.S. Liberator. Here's the captain. This is Sal Coletto, and all most of these are brothers, 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 brother. And that was it. There was four, five brothers, I guess. Again, this is the crew of the uh, Coletto family boat, the earliest boat they called the Dante Alighieri. Now this guy looks like Kirk Douglas. This is downtown Monterey, uh, the, uh, where the Alvarado and, Cal and Cali Principal streets come together and this was a uh, meeting place of the fishermen. They would sit and talk for hours. This is a Monterey Clipper. They called it the Clipper because of the bow this was a design that came from the Mediterranean. Most of the boats in the Mediterranean look like this. And they're, here they're laying out a net. You can see the, the cork line. This is a uh, crew pulling in the net. It's all by hand once they got the, the net up. To the now this is a picture of two different, two boats sharing one load. Now this, this boat was the city of Monterey and this boat, I can't remember the name, but anyway there was 300 tons of sardines in that, in that net. So they shared, uh, shared the load. The new Roma, uh, in other words they're, they have a load of sardines in their net and they're pulling the net up and once they get to this point, then the, the fish are right here, and then they bring them up. Now, this is, happens to be a Lampara net, and you can see the wing. These two guys on the end are holding the wing, and these, this guy has pulled up the center, and these are the, the uh, lead line at the bottom of the net. So they basically have captured the fish, and they're ready to pull them up. This is Booth's Cannery, just off Fisherman's Wharf. So there was a big cannery right in the harbor. It's no longer there, uh, but uh, the Booth built this cannery very early on. This is off Cannery Row. They're unloading into the hoppers. There's a hopper there. And each of these hoppers were connected by a tube that would be uh, that uh, they would pump the fish under the water into the cannery to get them canned. Again, unloading at the hopper. This is an early shot before they had 
um, the hoppers, they used a bucket system. And the bucket would go up to the, can up to the cannery, and here they would, the, the bucket would come down here, they would load the fish into the bucket by hand, and then s the cannery would pull the bucket up. It took hours to unload it, a boatload of uh, fish. Again, unloading at the cannery. This is a shot from the breakwater looking north towards Cannery Row. All the canneries, there's about a dozen boats there unloading. Same scene. Here you can see that they have a, a deck load. This is called a deck load. They would put up boards to uh, corral the fish and put them put them on deck. Unloading into the hopper at the cannery. Okay, this is a uh, 19, the uh, season is 1934-1935. Shows the name of the uh, member, or actually the captain, the name of the boat, tons caught, and the amount of money each crew collected at the end of the season. So, I mean, if you do the math on this, and which I did, uh, some of the high boats, thousand, $30,000, $25,000, $30,000, So when you divided that up among the crew, usually 11 or 12 men on the crew, they took home about $5,000 to $6,000 a season. Uh, now, in 1935, I think the, um, they were getting $7 a ton for fish, but in the late 40s, it was up to $100 a ton. This is a nice shot of the, uh, of the fleet at anchor. This is a shot from uh, the new wharf looking towards Cannery Row. Cannery Row in, in the distance. Francis Marie, the, uh, the Bellante family boat. Now these boats with the top cabin on there were built in the late 40s, starting around 1944, 1945. They built boats with the top cabin on there. This is San Giovanni. This is the Campagno fa uh, family boat. And uh, this is a, a party for the christening of this boat. This is a brand new boat. And you can see flowers here. Uh, there must have been, I don't know, 150, 200 people on that boat. This is Captain Frank Cardinale of the Santa Lucia. That's what it looks like from the bridge. The little flower of the Campagno family. Flying Fortress, this is uh, Slats Lucido's boat. There he is, the captain, right there. This is a great shot, uh, aerial photo. Fisherman's Wharf, the new wharf, the breakwater in Cannery Row. Of course, this is the Presidio. There's, a, there's what's left of Booth's Cannery. It's not, they don't have the cannery there anymore. And then it was, this was later removed. Artists came to Monterey and they painted the, se the scene. Here's Cannery Rope. Boat works, some of the smaller boats were built by the Sino family at the boat works. Okay, here, using this picture, you can see the progression of the type of fishing boats that were built in Monterey. These were small boats. These were, uh, they used them for trolling for salmon. They would use, catch uh, sand dabs. And then there's a, here's a smaller persainer, and you can see some of the larger persainers. So all the 
all the different kinds of uh, boats that were built in Monterey are in this photo. Okay, this is the Lumpar net that, that was introduced in 1905. They uh, brought it from Sicily. And the diagram shows how, how they surrounded this. Now, it's interesting to see the length of the Lumpara net. The Persainers, Persain nets were even larger. But if you stretched one end of the net to the other, it would reach from the beginning of Fisherman's Wharf all the way to Franklin Street. So if you stretch that, it's over, uh, I don't know, 1,000 feet. This is a photo of the, uh, the Steinbeck friends that party on the Western Flyer before they departed for Sea of Cortez. This was the Monterey Herald. Steinbeck Ricketts embarked on cruise. Thousands jam wharf for party. This was the celebration of the 1940 season. Uh, they had a, a tremendous season. Okay. I believe that's it. <laughs> so was there any, that, that was fascinating. Do we have any questions for Bob? I wanted to show you this. Um, could you hold this for me? Sure. Could we hold this yeah, out? Hold this out. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is an interesting Wait, photo. Wait, I can see this. This is an uh, outtake of a color movie that didn't come out very good at, in color, oh, but it oh. shows the boats in Monterey Harbor. This was taken about 1945 as well. Mm -hmm. It's a panoramic. Yeah. Did everybody see that? Thank you for 